Tonight, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced an extension of the nightly island-wide curfew for a further 14 days, as well as other measures to contain the spread of COVID-19 in Jamaica. So the island-wide curfew time will remain at 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. until 5 a.m. on the 7th of October 2020. Shadow Minister of Education and Training Angela Brownberg has expressed concerns for students, their parents and teachers as the nation's schools are scheduled to reopen come October 5. Persons are going to be concerned about travelling, about um, travelling to and for schools. The teachers, what are the instances of comorbidities that we might have among our teachers? The St. James Municipal Police have been commissioned to remove all political paraphernalia from public spaces in the city following the grace period that has expired as of yesterday, September 21. They were given an ultimatum to remove paraphernalia. If that is not done, then the candidates will be fined. And a taxi operator was shot and killed shortly after 2 p.m. today. Good evening. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced an extension of the nightly island-wide curfew for a further 14 days, as well as other measures to contain the spread of COVID-19 in Jamaica. The island-wide curfew time will remain at 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. until 5 a.m. on the 7th of October 2020. Let me say a little bit more on the curfews. The business community um, and indeed the traveling public has raised concerns to myself and the Minister of Health um, regarding the 7 o'clock curfew. We wanted to tighten up the curfew, that is to go to 7, but the concern about people rushing to get home in that one hour period between the close of business and people getting onto public transportation that may defeat the purpose. However, it is still having, and we acknowledge this, a negative impact on production, employment, and our economy generally. So the quicker we are able to bring the surge under control, it is the quicker we'll be able to restore our economy to close to full capacity in terms of its operation. And that really depends on how well people comply. Prime Minister Holness, in making the announcement earlier today during a virtual press conference at the OPM Media Center, said that we are now in a new phase of the pandemic in Jamaica. New phase of the pandemic. And that phase, we describe it as community transmission. It is a phase that we would inevitably reach. We would have wanted not to have reached it at this point or ever, but this is just the way in which uh, pandemics will unfold. It is not a fatalistic phase. It is not a phase in which we say we throw up our hands, we give up, and we no longer try to bring the spread of the virus under control. No. Now is the time when we must redouble all our efforts as a nation to bring the spread of the virus under control. We, however, note that there are some fundamental changes in how the virus has spread. Now the virus is uh, in literally most, if not all, communities around the island. And that is the assumption and the posture that every citizen must take. Uh, before, we could say it was in a cluster. We could identify it here, or we know these are the persons who are um, infected, and we could trace them back and connect them and put measures around them to contain it. Now we have to take a different approach. The current phase requires 
each individual to take their health, security, and safety into their own hands. He further noted that the rise in COVID-19 related deaths are of grave concern to the government. Since our first case, we now have 75 deaths, and that is depicted by the red line. We extend the sincere condolences to the loved ones of those who have passed. And this is, of course, a significant rise in the number of deaths. And indeed, it is of grave concern to the government and indeed to the, to the nation. Uh, and uh, their passing is indeed for many Jamaicans. Um, they use that as a signal of the seriousness of the pandemic. And as it should be, uh, the government and our experts have always been consistent and have gone to great lengths to explain to the population that this is a very dangerous disease and that complacency is something that we should never allow to creep in in the, the management of the disease and in our own personal behavior. Meanwhile, the Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, announced that in the last 24 hours, the country has recorded 127 new positive COVID-19 cases, bringing the total number of cases to 5,270, with five additional deaths related to the virus. Five unfortunately deaths in the last 24 hours a 61 year old female from kingston and st andrew 58 54 year old male from kingston and st andrew 52 year old female from st catherine 82 year old male from the kc and a 93 year old male from st mary four of the five deceased have confirmed pre-existing conditions and of course we express condolences to the family members the deaths now stand or COVID related deaths at 75. The, the current numbers are 5,270 uh, COVID-19 cases with 127 new positive cases in the last 24 hours and recovery is at 37. Um, and uh, uh, recoveries have also increased by 37, bringing the total number of persons who have recovered and have been released to 1,444. Number of active cases, there are currently 3,668 active cases being monitored across the country. And I just want to say that in terms of active cases, uh, there are uh, three main categories for the treatment of active cases. The more severe cases are, of course, in the hospital setting where they need uh, specific medical care. So those are the persons who are ill as a result of COVID. Those who are requiring some attention, but not as severely ill, maybe in a, a, a institution that we have put together um, or leased. Uh, and there are a number of them across the country that is manned primarily by our nurses and doctors. And then the vast majority are placed in their own personal surroundings, their homes. And in the, the, just bear in mind that we would not have locations to place everybody in an institution. Stay tuned to Mellow TV immediately following the newscast for the full coverage of today's press conference. In other COVID-related news, two cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center in Kingston. The confirmation came from Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of National Security, Matthew Samudo. The development means that two prison facilities have now confirmed COVID-19 cases. Earlier this month, five cases of COVID-19 were confirmed at the Horizon Adult Remand Center, a maximum security facility based on Spanish Town Road in Lower St. Andrew. In other news, a taxi operator was shot and killed shortly after 2 p.m. today. The deceased has been identified as 32-year-old Kenroy Young, otherwise called Kenny G, from a St. Catherine address.
Reports are that Young was heading towards Bull Bay when he stopped to let off a passenger in the vicinity of the Donald Quarry High School when a vehicle drove up and opened fire, hitting him in the upper body. The gunman then sped off, leaving Young nursing gunshot wounds. Young was rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead. He was said to frequently operate within the downtown Kingston to Harborview route. The East Kingston Police are currently investigating the incident. In other news, in Westmoreland, the police say they have charged Leslie Blake, a guidance counselor of a Clarendon address, for two counts of rape on Monday. The 30-year-old Blake was listed as wanted by the police for two counts of rape of a minor committed in March and June of this year in Little London, Westmoreland. He reportedly turned himself into the police on Sunday accompanied by his attorney and a warrant subsequently executed on him. His court date is being finalized and we will bring you more on this story in subsequent newscast. Grace Kennedy Limited GK through its Grace and Staff Community Development Foundation yesterday donated 210 tablets and laptops valued at approximately $5.2 million to 10 schools and six of the company's homework centers in Kingston. The initiative, which is dubbed Tools for Schools, is said to be aimed at equipping Jamaican teachers and students with computer technology to facilitate online education. The foundation partnered with Worldwide Technology to purchase the devices, which included Alcatel 7- and 10-inch tablets. The tablets, which come with a memory card, thumb drive, tablet case, keyboard, as well as a SIM card slot to facilitate connectivity via data plan, will be handed over to the students while the teachers will receive the laptops and accompanying accessories such as a laptop bag, thumb drive, and wireless mouse. Still in the news, with the country approaching the October 5 reopening of school, Shadow Minister of Education and Training Angela Brown-Burke has expressed some concerns for students, their parents and teachers. I'm extremely concerned about where we are in the opening, reopening of schools. I've been following the dialogue and I have heard, uh, I have heard some concerns expressed which I believe are concerns that we all have to take into consideration. We have to acknowledge that a number of individuals have basically lost confidence that the government has this pandemic and COVID-19 under control. Under those circumstances, persons are going to be concerned about traveling, about um, traveling to and for schools, the teachers, what are the instances of comorbidities that we might have among our teachers? You know, what are some of the other concerns that they have on the side of the parents? What are their concerns? You know, what is comorbidity like amongst our students? You know, and then, of course, you have the issue, the other issue about technology. And the truth is that by now, I'm hoping that most schools would have been properly equipped to be able to facilitate online learning. We know that some persons are anticipating some face-to-face -face learning. Some are saying online, some are saying blended. And for those who are saying absolutely no face-to-face -face, um, engagement, I believe that these are serious concerns that they have placed on the table. I believe that they are appropriate, they're reasonable concerns that have been placed on the table. Mrs. Brownberg further outlined ways the policies pertaining to the reopening of school can be addressed when taking into consideration what will work best for students and teachers. You know, we talk about education being student-centered. In the same way, any policy that we're going to put out in terms of exactly what needs to happen for the reopening of school has to go down school by school and determine what is happening there what are the conditions that are present and what does that mean for the teaching learning process in this case it really is not a one-size-fits-all i have spoken to principals who have said listen face-to-face -face learning is just not an option for us where we are
I have spoken to principals who have said to me that, listen, we would actually prefer face-to-face. -face. You have to understand what would be those instances that would have them come to those conclusions. And you cannot dismiss any of those. I'm concerned from a student perspective that students actually have the, the devices and the material that is required for them to actually access um, learning. We have to bearing mind, bear in mind you know we heard an announcement about tablets and i would assume that there must be some data plan attached to that as well we know that there's also um cable and there's also radio if we want to be honest that could be used and i think that in the whole of the conversation that we also need to have is to encourage parents and students to do as much as they can under these new circumstances to try and cope and make the best of it and we have to do that without ignoring their concerns southern trelawney is receiving a major boost to its road infrastructure with the flanker to Rock Spring corridor being upgraded through a $37.7 million contract. The project is being implemented by the National Works Agency, NWA, through its maintenance of secondary roadways program. This program seeks to improve road conditions in communities across the island. Community Relations Officer for the NWA's Western Region, Janelle Ricketts, says that the project targets just under one kilometer of roadway and involves significant drainage improvement as well as the reshaping and resurfacing of the roadway using asphaltic concrete. The project, which is being executed under local contract with s and road resurfacing materials, is expected to be substantially completed by year end. Motorists are being advised to obey the posted warning signs and the, infrastructure and the instructions of flag persons. The St. James Municipal Police have been commissioned to remove all political paraphernalia from public spaces in the city following the grace period that has expired as of yesterday, September 21. And we have more on this story with Colleen Me. Mayor of Montego Bay and the Chairman of the St. James Municipal Corporation, Councillor Leroy Williams, has now commissioned the Municipal Police to remove all political paraphernalia from public spaces in the city. During a press conference at the Municipal Corporation's building earlier today, Mayor Williams said that representatives of political parties were given adequate notice which expired yesterday, September 21. In my um, release, um they were given an ultimatum to remove paraphernalia. If that is not done, then the candidates will be fined and the fine will be punitive. I cannot say at this moment how much it's going to be, but they will be fined. It was to the candidate, ultimatum was to the candidates that they should remove um, the flags and posters by the 21st of September, which was yesterday, yes. So the municipal police will be going around and they will assess the situation and they'll make a note of those persons, those candidates who still have flagged in and around the city and in the wider parish and the, the necessary action will be taken. Mayor Williams, while sharing his vision to address the issues surrounding vending and parking spaces, said that he has been given a mandate by the people of St. James to deliver good governance. I have a mandate from the citizens, and that is good governance. And that is what I intend to deliver. But if you are thinking of maybe a single project that I would want to do. Of course, I mentioned during my installation that we are having problems with vending, serious problems with vending, and we would wish to build an arcade, a modern arcade at the site of the old shoe market. So I am pursuing that diligently. Of course, it's going to be hinged on um, what we receive from the Boglands, that has a lot to do with it. But this is an area that will be pursued. We intend to acquire some lands, actually to the right of this building. That is the 
the dentistry and that doctor office there. Yes, we hope to buy. I think, and we have some of the money to do that. I, I won't state exactly how much we have, but we intend to acquire that piece of land. And we're just going through the paperwork. And um, after, we would want to construct possibly a multi-story car park there. But we'll just build an ordinary car park for the time being. And um, maybe sometime after, we look at constructing a multi-story car park. Meanwhile, Mayor Williams urged citizens to follow the guidelines given by the government to help stop the spread of COVID-19 and promise the municipal's continued help in combating the spread of dengue. As far as the municipal cooperation is concerned, first and foremost, persons need to take responsibility. Um, they must follow the protocol, the COVID protocol. They need to make sure that they sanitize, they wear their masks, right? practice social distance, and this must be done. But I don't think it's something that we can enforce. We can only ask persons to be responsible so that it can mitigate the spread of the, the pandemic. We are, we are working, as always, with the, the public health um, department. And as you know, that some time ago, we had contributed um, three fogging machines so that they could um, carry out um, regular fogging. Um, so they are in constant communication with us and whatever assistance we can give them, we will always provide it. So we'll continue to do so, yeah. So if it means that we need to improve, we need to intensify, then we'll do so. Reporting from Mello TV News, I'm Colleen May. Thanks, Colleen. And those were the stories making news tonight. I'll return with a recap and we'll now take a break and then join Christopher Scott with sports.